Hi everyone, I'm Jeff. Welcome back to Sound and Voltage and my series on frequency modulation and FM synthesis. It's been my goal for this series to help build an actual understanding of what's going on with FM. First, we looked at what FM was in the first place and the variables we have to manipulate in an FM patch. Then we looked at the magic of frequency modulation, the creation of sideband frequencies that are added to the carrier frequency, creating a more sonically complex sound. And then in the last couple parts, we looked at a very specific example, one where the sine wave modulates itself and how that ended up creating sideband frequencies that exactly followed the harmonic series. And then we took a quick digression to look at why some musical intervals sound dissonant while others don't. If none of this sounds familiar to you, you might want to pop back and watch the series from the start. There's a link in the description. It's only about 30 minutes long now, so it won't take you long to get caught up, but we're going to be relying a lot on that knowledge moving forward. Now, throughout the series, I've been fairly specific about the frequency values that I pick for the carrier and modulator, and that's because FM is really sensitive to those values, or more specifically, it's sensitive to the ratio between those values. In this video, we're going to dig into why and how these values matter in terms of the sets of sidebands they create and how it relates to a harmonic series. And we're going to start with something that was a bit of a surprise when I saw it, and that's the concept of a virtual tone. So here we have a patch where the carrier frequency is set to 880 Hz and the modulator is 330. And remember our rules for where sidebands appear. They occur at intervals of the modulator frequency. So we expect the first set of sidebands to appear at 550 Hz and 1210. That's 310 Hz on either side of 880. Then we expect the next set to appear at 220 Hz and 1540. So let's give that a try. I have that set up here with the Cascades as a carrier at 880 Hz and the Captain Big O as the modulator set to 330. I'll switch to the Spectrum view and start bringing up the modulation and... Yeah, there are those two sets of sidebands right where we expected. Alright, cool. I'm going to switch back to the tuner now and... Huh. That's kind of weird. The tuner is registering that the carrier is now 110 hertz. Well, let's think for a moment what that would mean for this to be acting like some sort of 110 hertz tone. That would mean that we'd expect the harmonics to appear at multiples of 110 hertz. So 220, 330, 440, 550, and so on. But look at where the sidebands came in. I just listed them. They're at 220 hertz, 550, the carrier's at 880, upper sidebands at 1210 and 1540. Every single one of these is a multiple of 110 hertz. That means that each one of them is a harmonic of a 110 hertz tone. And I stopped the modulation when we got to 220 hertz. And let's think about what happens if we keep going. The next lower sideband would be at 220 minus 330 hertz. That's a negative 110. And we saw previously that we can treat negative frequencies as if they were positive. So that negative 110 hertz sideband would become 110 hertz. And we add another upper sideband at 1870. Well, that's cool. We just added in that 110 hertz fundamental for our virtual tone. And we'd continue. The next lower sideband would be at minus 440. That becomes 440. And as we add these in, it turns more and more into a complete set of harmonics for that 110 hertz tone. Sure, if it was a traditional simple waveform, we'd see 110 hertz as the dominant component with subsequent harmonics trailing off. But that's a simple waveform, and this one isn't so simple. It turns out that we could have predicted a lot of this. For instance, if you're a mathy sort of person, you may have noticed straight away that both the carrier at 880 Hz and the modulator at 330 are multiples of 110. In fact, 110 is the greatest common factor of those numbers. And it turns out, that's where our 110 Hz virtual tone comes from. As a test, let's consider another setup where the carrier is 400 Hz and the modulator is 160. The largest common divisor of those two numbers is 80, and I have it set up on the oscillators and I turn up the modulation a bit and... There it is, an 80 hertz virtual tone. When we look at the sidebands for this particular setup, you have the carrier at 440, but then the first set of sidebands at 320 and 480, then 240 and 560, 160 and 640, and finally 80 and 720. And those are exactly the frequencies of the harmonic series of an 80 hertz tone. Coming in at multiples of 80 hertz, they line up perfectly. It is an 80 hertz tone, even if the first few fundamentals are missing until we've dialed up the modulation a bit. And this was a real surprise to me when I saw it happening. 
But when I went back to the original paper by John Chowning on FM, there it was, hiding in the middle of everything. He doesn't call it a virtual tone, that's just something I started calling it, but the basic idea is described right there. Also, the whole idea of a missing fundamental is also a real thing. It's used in speaker technology, phone communications, and elsewhere. So I had worked out a cool demo where I fixed the carrier at 600 hertz, and then I sweep the modulator up from about 30 to 1500 hertz, and I watch as the virtual tones change, as the common factors change. But it turns out that demo was about five minutes, and I didn't really want to bring this video to a screeching halt. If you want to see the whole thing, I have it posted up on my second channel. There's going to be a link in the description, and uh, make sure to subscribe over there if you like that deep dive stuff. But rather than make you sit through all five minutes of that, I want you to listen to the very end, where I sweep downwards. And what I want you to listen for specifically is how the tone seems to go upward and then downward at the same time. Nita, huh? just to reiterate, the carrier remains fixed through all of that. It's just the modulation that's changing. This gets demonstrated more in the full-length demo video, but check out this little bit from the video where I sweep downwards, and watch the virtual frequency, and you can see that it goes up and down as the modulator changes. Now this is a tough experiment to do on your own unless you happen to have two tuners sitting around going at once. But even if you don't, give this experiment a try and listen for when things line up and the sound resolves into something more unified. That'll pretty much always be when the modulator evenly divides the carrier or where the carrier and modulator have a common factor. So what happens if there is no common factor? What happens if the carrier is 223 hertz and the modulator is 97 hertz? Those are both prime numbers, so by definition, the only factor they share is 1. Would that imply a virtual 1 hertz tone? Well, let's take a look at the sidebands. When it starts out, it seems normal enough, with all the sidebands evenly spaced out. But remember that the definition of the harmonic series is that the frequencies are multiples of a fundamental. And these might be spaced out every 97 hertz, but that lowest sideband isn't 97. So it doesn't really look like a harmonic series yet. We've seen before, though, where the fundamental frequency isn't there, but it appears when we keep adding in the negative frequencies. So let's look at those. Especially down at the low end, it just ends up as a mess, with all these partials that don't relate to each other very well. And the result is that, well, it doesn't sound awful, but it doesn't really sound like a solid and unified sound either. This sort of setup is good for, like, bell-like tones, and I'll have an example of that in an upcoming patching video. Here's another test that might be surprising. What if we stay with 223 hertz for the carrier, but now we use a 31 hertz modulator? It's still two prime numbers, so we're expecting something that doesn't sound very unified, except... Wow, this isn't what I was expecting the first time I heard it. It turns into this wall of drone, where the predominance of all these low partials just sort of overwhelms everything. In part, it's just the sheer number of them all packed together like that. And then there's frequency components well down into the LFO range, and that's going to have an effect on the quality of the sound. And also look at how the partials are really close together once the modulation gets deep. In a previous video, we saw how two partials that are close like this can have a beating effect, and we're definitely seeing that as well. I'm also going to dig into this more when we get to that patching video. All this talk of the number and density of the harmonics brings me to the second major topic I wanted to cover in this video. As we've looked at the different values for the carrier and modulator, we figured out a common factor, which can become the pitch of a virtual tone. And once we divide out that common factor, we're left with a ratio. So what does that ratio represent? Well, in a way, that ratio tells us how much like a harmonic series the sidebands are going to behave. Now, the problem for demonstrating that is that there are literally an infinite number of ratios. They do boil down into a number of categories, but even then there's a fairly large number, and I'm not sure how helpful it is to really just go through them all exhaustively. So I'm going to talk through a couple of examples and demonstrate what the two numbers of the ratio end up meaning, and maybe you can continue the investigation. <laughs> 
So for the ratio, I'm going to end up calling the two numbers C and M. We don't have to use those names, it could just as easily be apples and oranges, but C and M will help keep us thinking about carrier and modulator. Remember that if you multiply C by the common factor we found, we just end up back at the original carrier frequency again. And the same with M, if you multiply it by the common factor, you end up with our original modulator frequency. So as a place to start, let's consider what happens when we have a one-to-one -one ratio. That would be when we have the same frequency for a carrier and modulator. And we saw this in the video on self-modulation. A 110 hertz carrier and modulator has upper side bands of 220, 330, 440, 550, etc. And for the lower side bands, we subtract 110 each time. So that first lower side band is going to be zero hertz. That gets filtered out. The next ones are minus 110, minus 220, minus 330. Those all get wrapped around zero and become positive 110, 220, and 330. And those just lay right on top of the ones we already have, leaving us with just 110, 220, 330, 440. And that's the full harmonic series of 110 hertz. And notice that the first harmonic, 110 hertz, is also the carrier frequency. So now let's look at a 2 to 1 ratio. So that might be when the carrier is 220 and the modulator is still at 110. We're going to have the same 110 hertz virtual tone again, since it has a common factor of 110. And the upper side bands are still going to be 110 hertz steps apart, so that's going to be 330, 440, 550, etc. The lower side bands will come in at 110 hertz, and then at zero, which will get filtered out, then at minus 110, minus 120, minus 330, so on. Those wrap around to positive 110, 220, 330, and they lie on top of the partials that are already there. And we're back to having that full harmonic series for 110 hertz. The only real difference is that the carrier is actually the second harmonic of this virtual tone. And how about 3 to 1? A carrier at 330 and a modulator of 110, still 110 hertz tone. The upper side bands are still 110 hertz apart at 440, 550, 660. The lower side bands are at 220, 110, 0, minus 110. Again, we flip them around 0. And we're back to having all of the harmonics again for a 110 hertz tone, except now the carrier is the third harmonic. So there's a pattern. It seems like when we have anything that is C to 1, like 1 to 1, 2 to 1, 3 to 1, then we get the complete harmonic series. The only difference is that the carrier is at the Cth fundamental. And the main thing that that really affects is that you're going to have to turn up the modulation depth in order to get the sidebands to head down towards that fundamental. What if we flip that around and look at the ratios that are 1 to M? So that means the modulator is bigger than the carrier. I'm not going to keep working through things, so let's just jump to the graph for a 1 to 8 ratio. That's a carrier of 110 and a modulator of 880 hertz. I'm going to show the upper side bands coming in first and then the lower. We know that there's going to be the same number of upper and lower side bands. And here they are, paired up like that, 220 hertz apart. 220 hertz, interesting, twice the carrier frequency. And we can change that M value, that second part of the ratio, but what that's going to change is the density of the harmonics. Let's say we made it a 1 to 6, and if we look at this, then we see the harmonics are paired up just as they were before, but more densely now. Okay, so that second number in our ratio, which I've called M, that seems to say something about how densely the harmonic series is populated. And so far we've looked at 1 in M and C in 1, but if you think about C and M, both of these things we learned are still in play. If C is close to 1, then the carrier frequency is going to be close to the fundamental of that new virtual tone, which means we don't need to have very deep modulation to get that filled in. If C is large, then the carrier is quite distant from the fundamental of the virtual tone. That means unless we've turned up the modulation, the low harmonics could be missing, which will make it hard to really sound like that new tone. For the other value, if M is low, then the harmonics are densely packed in. When M is 1, every harmonic in the series is filled in with a sideband. When M is 2, only every second harmonic is filled in. If M is quite large, like every eighth harmonic is occupied, then the resulting tone is probably going to seem less coherent and more like just a bunch of individual frequencies. In the end, it can be hard to take an exact ratio like 5 to 4 and say how it's going to differ from 4 to 5. However, just like the last video where I was looking at the ratio of frequencies of notes in a musical interval, it's almost always the case that the simpler a ratio is, the more like a coherent tone it's going to sound. 2 to 1 or 1 to 2 is going to have a much more natural sound than 16 to 7 or 7 to 16. And I've said it throughout this series, this is all best used as a way to build intuition for how it works, and as a jumping off point for you to do your own exploration. 
frequency modulation ends up being so sensitive to small changes that you never know what's waiting for you when you tweak a knob just a little bit. Okay, so that about wraps things up for this video. We looked at the carrier and modulator frequency, learned that it forms a ratio with a common factor, and that we can think of it as a virtual tone with a fundamental frequency equal to that common factor. And we learned that the ratio that was left over can tell us how close to a full harmonic series that the sidebands result in. We also looked at some examples where there wasn't a common factor. Next time, I want to tackle something that's kind of fundamental to the official definition of FM, but which is kind of hard for us to work with here in modular land. And that's the concept of the index of modulation. This whole time, we've just had an attenuator to control modulation depth. But when it comes to understanding what's going on for real, we need to think of in terms of this index. So if you've wondered why the sideband strengths go up and down as we change modulation, this next video is where you're going to get some answers. I hope you're finding this series on FM interesting. There's a lot of potential for great sounds here. And if you made it this far in the video, maybe consider liking and subscribing. It really helps the channel out. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Thanks.